Hey guys, it's Eric and Trianne from uh, Rolling Well. We're going to be talking to you today from our kitchen. Uh, where are we right now? Chehalis, Washington. <laughs> We're standing in our trailer. I was living. like, uh, <laughs> that's a trick question. So, I don't know. Clearly, as, as a full-time family, it makes it complicated to remember things like where we are. I don't know what answer you were looking for. That works. So in our rig, um, we are we are here to share with you a little bit about our love, one of our passions, which is what coffee. Give me the easy answers. So over three years on the road, we've come up with a number of different methods, ways, procedures, things that we've learned for making coffee. Uh, we haven't just been drinking coffee for three years; it's been for most of our lives. Both of us growing up with uh, military dads and. Growing up in the Lutheran church, it was kind of a requirement and somewhere around age 12 and up. So this is kind of a lifeblood for us, what we're used to. Over and the years, things have gotten fancier, right? I don't know. No. Well, no. No? Maybe for you. <laughs> I, I now get hot coffee. That's fancy. <laughs> what was coffee like growing up? Oh, I didn't really start drinking coffee until high school. Because it was, we, I lived up near Seattle, so it, it was fancy coffee. From like a drive through What was the, what was the place you Did went to up there? Drive-thru then? I don't know. Um, Bonetto's, for those of you who are familiar with that in QFC. Um, it wasn't until later on that we were drinking Starbucks and things, but we love to go find whatever the local shop is. And so one of the coffees that we're doing today is from a local shop that we went to at the Bloom Fiesta. That's right, in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So fast forward a few years uh, from high school, just just the lightest few from high school to now. Yeah. And uh, we now <laughs> travel around the country. We live full time in the rig, and so we drink coffee everywhere. So <laughs> it just depends on where we're going. Um, the coffees that we have, though, the hundred different ways that we make it, I think is what we wanted to talk about today. Yes. What was coffee like at home? Uh, you know, just... Like a drip drip coffee. coffee. I grew up with drip. Drip coffee. My parents got an espresso machine in high school, so then things got a little bit fancier around there, but most of the time it was drip coffee or gas station coffee, that kind of stuff. I never really had the fancy... They didn't have too much fancy stuff until I met you. Then everything got fancy, right? This life got fancier. This is way more information than I thought y'all were getting. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it's uh, interesting, right? Because why is this thanks. important to us? Why is this a big deal? A coffee? Um, because we have so many things to do, we don't sleep. I don't know. Sit, a little bit of energy. What happens when you don't drink coffee? You end up getting headaches and stuff, right? I don't know because I never slept. <laughs> it becomes something that's important to us is what the point is. We always have to have our coffee around. <laughs> Maybe we'll have separate channels. <laughs> we'll have trans version of coffee and area version of Dr. Coffee. <laughs> it's more like a uh, coffementary. Is that a word? <laughs> I, I, I wasn't I wasn't prepared. I should have eaten more before we started. <laughs> a coffee mentory. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> no, like it really it. doesn't. It was, hey, here's four ways to make coffee. Nobody's going to watch that long. Uh, You'd be surprised. It's the connection, right? Do you guys feel connected now? Because you know more about how to grew up drinking coffee? No. Nobody cares. Watch the comments. <laughs> watch the comments. Okay. All right. So what's your favorite way to make coffee today? And not, not out, because we still go out and grab coffee once in a while. We not happen right to be, now. you're not supposed to date these things, but we happen to be filming this in the middle of the, the global pandemic. So nothing's happening, right? We're here in the rig, which is why this even came to be with some extra time on our hands. But if that wasn't going on, we would be going to local coffee mm -hmm. shops. We'd grab stuff. And what, so I tend to order an Americano. That's my, that's my go-to drink if I go someplace is a hot Americano. Sometimes I get crazy and I drink it iced, but most of the time it's just hot Americano. What's mm -hmm. your drink of choice? All uh, the milk latte. We used to get crazier than that. I had the Dutch Brothers was a chain close to where we were, and they had a that iced. What was the? You like the Kokomo? That was it. Kokomo, coconut milk, and a bunch of sugar and stuff. But anymore, it's just kind of plain. So today we don't get quite that crazy. Trian gets really close to hers here, and we've kind of figured out how to make the Americano a little bit as well. But 
Nine times out of ten is strip, but sometimes we get kind of fancy in that in the house. So we're going to talk a yes. little about how we do that here and different things we use for that. Mm -hmm. So where do we want to start? Hot water? Ain't got no hot water. <laughs> no hot <laughs> water. I'm going to light this up for you, right? <laughs> it should be boiling. <laughs> All right, talk about what you have. Okay, this is, um, I don't even know what you call them. It's a little ceramic pour-over pour -over container. And... Um, I like the ceramic because I think it's better than using the plastic, although we do have another coffee maker thing that's plastic. Um, and then I get the unbleached filters yeah. for it. So, And this this comes in a bigger deal when we don't have power. You, actually, you actually do this a lot of times, though, even when... Well, a couple of things. One is that... Because we're not going shopping as much, I feel like my organic Keurig pods are kind of, I'm rationing them. <laughs> I'm rationing them. And this came about because we were boondocking. We didn't have our regular electricity plug in, so we were just running on the generator and the propane. So if I had had this at the time, I could have had unlimited coffee, but I didn't have it at the time. Um, so... My lovely sister-in-law gave it to me um, for Christmas, and so yeah. it's been getting a lot of use. And now we're using it because the particular park that we're in right now has 50 amp power instead of, I mean, 30 amp power instead of 50. And so with that, then the way it works instead of the trailer. You have or coffee. One or the other. Unless you do the drip. So what do we want to use? So this is the pinion coffee that we got in New Mexico. Which is good. And we learned that pinion means pine nut, right? Isn't that what it is? So it's almost like a hazelnut. It's a very similar taste to that. I know here. My parents had a flavored coffee phase growing up. Dad was into hazelnuts. So that's probably why that's I like really it. It's a flashback to, to that. So what, is this precise? Nothing in my life is precise. I don't measure anything, <laughs> even when I'm baking a cake. So, I'm actually, so I'm supposed to be doing all organic. This is interesting. And I really like the flavor of this pinion, and it's not organic, so I'm kind of cheating and doing half and half. Makes me feel better about so, the whole situation. Oh yeah. <laughs> nope. I, I haven't actually watched you nope. this before. So this is half organic and half not? I figure that it just... All evens out in the end. <laughs> it's just org. This is org coffee. Org or coffee. anic. It's really simple. You boil water and then you pour it over the grounds. It's super. So you don't easy. have to stir. You don't do anything. You just do this. Eric apparently has more steps to his coffee making. I, I just never watched you do it. You always offer me a cup of coffee. And does it taste like coffee? Yeah. Right. Like org coffee. I can hear it dripping. Can you guys hear that? We should get in close for like the ASMR thing. People listening to the sounds. I like to hear that. Quiet. So we can... We're not going to do this Listen. all the times. <laughs> so it how do you... does take a little longer than a regular, you know, pod. Do you have a precise... No. So I do it until I get about the point that I feel like the creamer need for the moment has enough room. And we, we probably should unpack that just a little bit too because really? you don't ask me to make coffee for you too often no <laughs> you don't do it right because i don't do it right <laughs> so trianne has, a, has rules about how much coffee goes in here to how much creamer and if you're a creamer user a creamer drinker you probably understand that i always drink my coffee black so it doesn't compute but if she gets too far sorry if i make it too far one way or the other then there's issues with that and so what she's trying to do i think is get to that perfect mix right but in the essence of time, especially for Eric's stories, we're going to just stop right there. So, <laughs> option number one, great for boondocking. Okay. And yeah. using local coffee that we love to buy whatever is local to the area. So. That we can supplement to make half organic. I really didn't know that happened. That's fantastic. Most places have organic. This was purchased before I was doing all organic. It's not a criticism. I just didn't know that you did it. All right, she's going to do that. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a different way that we started this off. Uh, when we were doing, when we first got on the road, we were making coffee without power. It was with the AeroPress, if anybody has one of these. So very similar process. Uh, is that what my coffee cup's for? Yep. All right. 
So this one, same idea, maybe it's like a French press. We're a French press. We don't use one anymore. We haven't used a French press for a number of years because... It's a pain to clean. And when you are in a park without sewer, you don't want to be spending time cleaning your French press. Yeah. So that's probably why Seems we like went to this. a great idea. Several people have said that they started with a French press, but it kept breaking for different reasons. And so they went to a stainless steel French press. That's an option. But... This was a better fit for us. It is. It's just a, it's kind of a backwards French press, right? I guess it's a sleeve here, a plastic sleeve, and we put a filter basket on the bottom. So I put a piece of paper in here, you buy them by the hundreds. Um, it gets twisted on, and so now this is the piece that actually sits on the pot itself. Now, to this, we're going to add the coffee, which yes. is what? Usually we have a finer grind. Yeah, we found that the finer the grind, the better it is, but if it gets too fine, that's almost like silt and you can't push through it. So somewhere, somewhere between. Now we do this very different. I told you guys I like the Americano style, so I tend to make mine a little bit darker. That's two of these scoops for a cup this size. And then there's gradients on the side of this. We will end up drinking this. No coffee will be wasted to do so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so there's gradients down the side. Well, they're not huge. One, two, three, four. Um, what they tell you on this usually is to put one of those scoops in there and then go to one or two, and that's going to make that shot. Uh, but the pressure through the coffee is what they're going for. It makes it more of an espresso type thing than the drip. But uh, because I know that I'm going to add water back into it over time, I've just gone to filling the whole thing up completely and then let it sit. So the process for this, regardless of how far you're going to go down or how much water you put into it, is to get the water into the sleeve here. And then this is the magic little stirring stick they give you, right? So by doing this, it's kind of putting all of the ground so they're getting wet. And I don't know if this is all right or scientific, but I understand that there's more caffeine the longer that the beans are in touch with the water. Like that's the, that's how I understand it to be. So I think that's why this becomes a little bit stronger shot. Um, so now this thing's kind of dripping a little bit. Hear it? Can you hear it? Nope. Oh, is this slowly bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> but what happens now is after I let it sit here for a minute, we're actually going to put pressure from this, and that's what pushes it through like an espresso shot. And that's where people like to use this. So oh, we'll do just that. This won't work on plastic cups. <laughs> it's got to be a ceramic cup. <laughs> and the trick with this, the real magic, is to make sure when you're done to do this right away. Um, by releasing the bottom here, you take that filter piece off, and that has a piece stuck to the bottom, you just push the puck out and then it creates that puck left at the end of it. So it's easy to clean up afterwards. A little quick little rinse of that and it's all done. Um, and then that's your coffee. Mine's about here, so if you were a cream person that'd be alright. For me to drink that I'm going to top it off with water and then that's going to be my good cup of coffee. And I'll have one or two of these. I notice I that... hand this off to our audience yeah, since we'll you that. already have a mug. <laughs> Anybody that would like an Americano. <laughs> We do have an audience. I don't know if we explain that to everybody. Um, French press, AeroPress, those type of coffees, even espresso. I grew up drinking coffee all day. I can have eight, ten cups of drip coffee all day long. These coffees are stronger for me, and I'll notice if I get too many of those. It's definitely more of a jittery type situation. So my preference is usually drip just because I enjoy drinking the coffee all day, but there's definitely more flavor involved with these two, and I think that's Probably what it is. Every time you make me that pour over, I really like the taste of it. It's just not as, it's, I can't have as much of it. So one of the reasons that we went with AeroPress, so we specifically bought the AeroPress when we went full time and moved into That's the right. RV because it's lightweight, doesn't take up much space, you can use any kind of coffee, um, and it's, it, like you said, I think the filters are 300 packs, so, um, you know, last a good month. Um, yeah, I think the whole thing, <laughs> maybe okay. it rough. Um, I think the, uh, um, I think the whole thing was like $35, right? Because so far, nothing that we've talked about has had too much expense to it. I think For the some whole reason, kit, I feel like it's more than that, but it's, you know. It, it wasn't a it lot. It was well. a reasonable investment. The pour over certainly wasn't, right? Those are fifteen, twenty dollars depending on what I think depending on what you get. Right. Plastics are even cheaper than that. So and it, yeah, and part of the reason I went with the pour over versus the AeroPress at the time is um sometimes <clears throat> the AeroPress is just too much work. <laughs> it is. And so the pour over is super easy and convenient. Yeah. 
I think that pushing into that thing, it actually takes quite a bit of pressure to do mm -hmm. it, and that's depending on how you're feeling and <laughs> what your how awake you like. are. How awake you are, that can be challenging too. Yeah. So it's not always our first go-to, but it's nice to be able to have that. So what do we have left? So we've got the Nespresso machine. Yeah. Um, this is another item that we purchased knowing we were heading into a smaller space. Um, this we, thing's tiny. It's very small, which is nice. Um, and it's it's made to create a espresso shot. That that's right. that's the design. So you're gonna make you're gonna use a pod now, um, similar to the Keurig, which we'll show you in a second. But the smallest espresso pod that goes in and is used for that lighter lighter bit. Um, it's made actually. Maybe you can order it with little bitty uh, espresso glasses that you can use here, or you can flip this piece up and, and put it in. Now there's fancier. Nope. That's not gonna work, is it? Hold, please. <laughs> Should have one work up ready. There's fancier, uh, does that work? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's bigger versions of this as well. Uh, this particular size we bought because of the size of it, right? Because it was easy to use. And there's literally two buttons on this thing. On the back, you have a, a, a small cup and a large cup. And there's fancy names for this, right? Do you know what they are? Lungo and something. Okay, I didn't. I was hoping <laughs> we could look that up for you. But, uh, um, Again, it's back to the Americano small stuff. Small and bigger. Small and big. Right. We both use this differently. So back to me liking the Americano or black coffee. I will run the large button twice on each pot. So I'll put a pot in, run it through with coffee. I'll run it through again, which is less intense, right? But more water going in. And I'll put another pot in and do that again. So two of those is my cup of coffee. That's what I like. Yes. You run it. One big. One big? Yeah, yeah, one big and then milk. And then the creamer milk on top of that. So literally with this thing, pretty straightforward. It goes in just like that and you close it. Remember, this is going to be a little bit loud. It's, there's a pressure Probably. pushing this stuff through, so I'm going to do that. It's not horrible. It's going to make a little bit of noise. And it's relatively quickly. Because of the pressure coming through this thing, it creates this really creamy coffee, more like an espresso shot would. And so I think that's where a lot of the flavor comes from in this. Um, They've got their own brands, but a lot of them are store brands. So you can find Peach, you can find Starbucks, you can find a lot of coffee you're familiar with, uh, as well as their own individual thing that you can use too. This one's almost done, but I don't know if you can see the foam coming out of that. It's really... Yeah, probably not. A little bit. You'd have to <laughs> take the cup up to the... <laughs> Pour sideways. <laughs> you're going to have to trust us on this. It's I bet very, we can do it. Where's it? Grab me one of the clear shot glasses. I'll pour it into that so you can see it stacked. We're kind of creating some of this as we go along. All right, watch this. Well, all of it. <laughs> so you've got the dark coffee underneath and a little bit of that foam. The heat? <laughs> we'll find out. So that's what you're looking at, right? A really nice, pretty, foamy bit on top. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very, very delicious cup of coffee. Um, so we'll share that later. We'll save that. <clears throat> so two of those, I do this again a second time with just the clear water, and then I mean I say run clear, but lighter water, and then run it one more, and that's that's my cup of coffee. I like that. Um, I guess that's it for this. And then what's our final kind of our day to day normally, right? Well, yeah. So that we first started, we had the AeroPress and the Nespresso. So if we had power, we'd use an espresso machine. If we didn't have power, we'd use AeroPress. We always have right. power, but if we didn't want to use it for coffee, that's what right. we'd use. Yeah. Now that we're plugged in a lot more often, it actually started in the office last week. Or last year, I'm sorry. I would take this to work is where this, this machine came from. Well, yeah, you bought it for the office. And then when we left, it came with us. It's a monstrosity. It's one of the bigger appliances we have in in the rig, but it gets used quite a bit. Um, so when we go back to the office, that's close enough. I think it should go with, but we'll see what I don't happens. Mind that. It gives me, so this is closer to the concept like behind the Keurig. People coffee. love this, hate it, whatever they think. This is a pot of coffee that you make in your normal coffee maker, but it's hot all day long, right? That, that's what the Keurig does. Anytime you hit the button, you're going to get a hot cup of drip coffee. That's it. It's not fancy. It's not going to be crazy, but it's just kind of basic coffee, but hot all the time. Oh, right? we were going to show your Yeti, too. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your Yeti? So I love, so I've got my Yeti cup with the straw lid and my metal straws with the silicone at the top. That's what I use for my iced coffee. Um, 
It's beautiful today. It's in the upper 60s, lower 60s. I don't know. The sun is out, and so iced coffee sounded like a good idea. Eric's got a little different style. This one will fit in my cup holder for the van, which is awesome. And this won't. Um, I've yet to find <laughs> into the Yeti cups. I've got. We pulled another one up here. Maybe we got put back. I've got a big, great, big one we got from REI last year. It's a huge Eddie cup, and I actually really liked it, but I almost had to abandon it because I can't put it into any vehicle. There's no cup holder that holds this. That's a fireside cup. Yeah, so it becomes an outside cup. This one I got for Christmas, I think. A nice blue color, the handle's the right size. And what I really like about it is that I can put two full cups of curry coffee here in the morning, take that in the office, but that's why I'm using most of the time. And it does sit time. in your truck? Yeah, it Cup will fit holder. in the truck. I don't think the van, does it's it still the limited. Van? So the tapered bottom Yetis definitely have more versatility about where they go, mm -hmm. but I like the feel of this and it keeps the coffee hot all day long. So that tends to be what I do. What do you want? Are you going to make one to drink? I know you're going to show no. creamer and stuff too. But I, I think we have enough. Do you want a cup of coffee to drink? How are you doing? I'm good. You're good. Right. Okay. I have creamer to that one. <laughs> I know. Creamer's coming up next. All right. Well, I'm going to top mine off then. Okay. So, Dan, Eric, yeah. Eric's going to do the Laughing Man coffee. This is... Which is... Go ahead. Um, so, the two that we have, we have the Newman's Organic, which is one I drink, and the Laughing Man, which is a non-GMO. Um, both of them are companies that do a lot of philanthropic... Philanthropic... It's my word of the day. Um, giving back to the communities that they're in. So, we enjoy supporting them. All right. And it tastes good. Um, this is a little bit quieter. It doesn't have the same pressure. It's not pushing on that. Bars, right? They're talking about pressure. Bars of pressure. I think that's right. This definitely I don't read the same, same articles that he does. I have no idea. <laughs> where the Nespresso was trying to pressurize through that metal cylinder and create the pressure, and that's where the foamy coffee comes from, similar to an espresso shot. This is just trying to replicate drip. So those Keurig cups have loose uh, grounds inside of it. When the water gets into there, then just pressures and drips out the bottom, and that's what's going on. Uh, they're pretty versatile. We've had multiples of these over years. If they ever have a problem, they start to get slowed down or stopped up. Uh, vinegar is actually the magic for this. Wait for the... I think it's out. noisier than the Nespresso, but... <laughs> it could be. Um, if you have trouble with your Keurig and you're having issues with that, run uh, run the, the, the water uh, reservoir about half full of vinegar and run that through and then follow that with two or three clear uh, reservoirs full of water. And that typically will take a lot of that hardened uh, water out and free that up. It took us a while to, to remember that. I think that became a, a catch for everybody is to, to learn how to do that. But, um, that's my favorite cup of coffee for the most part. If I'm not going to go out somewhere, this is kind of my norm. I'm just going to grab something and, and drink it as a, just a regular cup of Keurig. So Trans... Does that have to be plugged no, in? Trans setting up a, a couple different things right now. Um, these are more like uh, add-ons for these and some neat appliances. Um, we were kitchen gadget nuts in our house, and so we downsized, got rid of everything, and then went and bought new things. So we still have a lot of kitchen gadgets. They're Thank just, you. we're better at justifying them now than we used to be. <laughs> well, in order to take up space in our current space, what do we have, 300 square feet? Yeah. Um, we have to be using it a lot. Um, this gets used every few days. Coffee, obviously, is a daily, multiple day of multiple times a day occurrence. So, so nobody looking at that will have any idea what it is. No. It's called an almond cow. Try not to hurt myself here. Okay, so this brilliant machine actually is something that I heard about from Sessi, which and we drug our feet way too long buying one of our own, um, but they're awesome. So we don't do any gluten or dairy in our house, and um, the plant-based milks in the stores, there are a lot of them, a lot of them available. Um, many of them are full of fillers and sugars and that type of thing and I wanted to be able to control what was in what we were drinking and uh, especially with the organic piece it's less expensive to buy the organic nuts yourself and control if there's sugar in your milk or not so the basic the thing's gonna make almond milk that's the whole makes almond milk today we're making cashew milk creamer yeah. uh, 
With the almonds, you want to soak them first. The cashews are soft enough that I don't need to do that. So what I did today, I've got a cup of the cashews in here. They're raw, organic cashews. Where's my... Oh, here we go. In this little container, I have some cardamom, pumpkin pie spice, and vanilla powder that I'm going to put in with it. Since we're making creamer and not just milk. There's two ways you can do it with creamer. I put the water in the little collector cup. And what? So just do that really quick, right? Because otherwise, you put this whole thing full of water and it's yes. create what? what? What do you usually make of that? Usually, just make straight either almond milk or cashew milk or a combination. Yeah. Sometimes I'll put oats or coconut in it. So that goes in the fridge, and then we have milk. Instead of buying cartons of milk, we're using this to create the almond milk. Right. But so we also... make a new batch probably every three days or so. Um, Depending on what we're using it for, we use it for baking or cereal, cereal right now. smoothies, are... that kind of thing. Uh, so, I have it in the collector cup. Normally, this wouldn't be in the bottom, but the I'm making a stronger batch of milk, basically, by doing this. Um, and the container needs to be submerged in the water, so that's why we're doing that. So, the trickiest part of this deal... Do you put a date in there already? No, so I put some maple syrup oh. um, in the in with the water for sweetener. You can use organic dates. Um, most of the time, recently, I haven't been putting any sugar in my creamers. I just like the flavor of it. Uh, Daniel specifically asked. We told him he could drink coffee on Sundays. <laughs> so he specifically, and tomorrow's our Sunday. Um, so we... Are making some a little bit sweet for him. Sessie will probably appreciate that it's got some maple syrup <laughs> in it too. Um, so trickiest part of this is getting the container on because you have to put it in backwards. This is kind of loud but it doesn't take very long. So the little green light comes on. You're gonna hit go. It's a good time to enjoy a cup of coffee though. So well, that's one. one. back to solid and that's that's it whether she's doing the the creamer whether she's doing a whole batch that's all it takes time wise so normally you would use that collector cup and set this on it but i don't have that which is why i need to grab one of these you got it yep. okay um i have one of my little mason jars here we've got our creamer Ready to go. Okay, so then we're going to transfer. Sorry. <laughs> I made a little bit of a mess. It's okay. All right, so when you take this off, I can't remember. Oh, there we go. If our sink was available, I would just <laughs> rinse it off right now. Our sink is under the super easy, super easy to um, clean up. And then with the pulp, you can make chia pudding. You can um, spend a little bit of time get the pulp a little bit drier and use it for baked goods or oatmeal, that type of thing. So nothing pulp, ever goes to waste. The pulp she's talking about is what's left over in that in that metal cup we put into there. So that basically with that sieve, it's holding all of the solids inside of that and then circulating the water through to create the, the, uh, the cream or the milk, whatever you're, you're making. Here. But what's neat about that is then after you're done, you've got this whole mess of good pulp left and Tran uses right. it for a lot of different things. Like she said, pudding or she'll put it into oatmeal or something else too. So the whole thing gets used, which is really neat. It's pretty great. And the kids really enjoy it and they can pick their own things uh, however they want their... So they what want if you sweetened want... milk or not sweetened milk. Okay, so this is the other thing. What if you wanted it hot? It in... huh? What if you wanted hot creamer? Hot creamer? <laughs> you know, I should have had sussy wait. I didn't think about it. Wow. Okay, so this is a little... This, it, this one's by Nespresso, but there's a lot of different options for 
having steamed milk. And I call these frothers if you're looking for them. Put some links in so you guys can see the stuff. But that's what you're looking for. What I like about this is everything turned on. Yeah. Um, what I like about this is I can warm up my creamer without putting my coffee in the microwave. And so it's just one less nuclear exposure. <laughs> um, so you can't hear it because it's so quiet, but she pushed the button on the back. You can see a red light, maybe. Can see right now? Roxanne. Come on. No. Okay. Um, so it, it's frothing inside. It is frothing. So one thing that I also do with this and what we use it for is ch like chocolate milk for the kids. So uh, you can put the chocolate powder in while it's frothing. I do my golden milk like that. You can put the turmeric powder and everything in while it's frothing and that way it's um, mixing at the same time. Super quick and easy. You can see the steam coming off of this. It, what's happening, there's a small whisk at the bottom on a magnetic motor that's spinning so, around. And then it's creating, well, it's whisking. It's also heating through a heating element. And it creates this hot, frothy creamer. Yep, so, it's pretty great. So it's more like the latte experience at home. Yeah, and that's your preferred cup of coffee. That's here in the house. This is what you yes. can take the time. It's going to be... A, a more concentrated shot of coffee. It's going to have the hot cream on top of it, um, and that's that's her thing. Yes. I don't typically I drink typically that. I typically don't drink it black unless no. I have to. But we've been able to, to make it work for quite a while. So that's if we had to give, what would we give up if we had to give up out of this pile? Because we've the talked Keurig, about for sure. <laughs> it wasn't even a hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. It's it so is. big. And I could replicate that. And normally we have the Berkey on the counter. I could replicate it with a pour over. That, that would be all right. It's the convenience of pushing the button. It's definitely yes. a lazy way to make a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, but that's probably probably the thing I use the most, but if it went away, we'd survive. We would survive. We don't actually use an espresso anymore either. We've passed that. <laughs> it's been We gifted on. it, and then we asked for it back for this uh, little demestration <laughs> so, so you could guys. see what the options were. <laughs> but... Um, it's been in so our here's the deal. Because. The kids. <laughs> uh, um, Eric. The children are usually sleeping pretty close to the kitchen. And so anytime we would make coffee, there was a high likelihood of waking them up. And so the Nespresso could sit on our dresser and we could make coffee in the morning without waking up the kids. Which was great, except for I always drink creamer with my coffee, so I had to come downstairs and get creamer anyway. So, yeah. So I think I think that's it. That's the highlight of our coffee world. Um, not anything too much fancier than that. I don't think there's anything we want to change. There's no. We're not after any other products right now. I think we're pretty set. We've gone through. We didn't show grinders. We finally got a burr grinder. I'm not in love with it. Um, it's still a little bit easier right now to. Buy ground them. coffee, which yes. is not the right way to do it. We know that, but it's just trying to have is a, the there a right. Wrong way to drink coffee. Well, I mean, if it makes you happy. Oh, I, I, there. Everyone else is nodding yes. There is a wrong <laughs> way. <laughs> so the grinder is. It tastes better, but it's one of the things that only comes out to grind the coffee, and so it's really low use. We tried that pepper grinder thing, like the hand mill. Do you remember we had the one that was? I manual? remember. That was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Seemed like a good idea. And expensive just... for what it was. Yeah. And then our burr grinder, so every time we move, we have to take the things off the counter and put them away. Well, my the grinder got put on the floor. <laughs> and all of my organic Swiss decaf beans and what was ground is now on the carpet under Emily's bed. So okay. that's kind of sadness. So when you come out so sometimes love it. after you move. You'll see one coffee bean on the ground. It looks like you've got rabbits somewhere. <laughs> Let's just find this little bean. A little pile of beans. So, we'll find them all eventually, but they kind of shake out of place every once in a while. It's like an ear, a year-long Easter egg hunt. It's uh, it's fun. It's recreation and fun. So not a big fan nice. of the bird grinder right now. And I don't know what we'd do instead. I think we it's buy it ground. We just buy it ground. That seems to be the way we go. So we'll take criticism for that for sure. See, if you have a grinder you love that isn't... Yeah. Doesn't take up a lot of space. Oh, says he says the little hand grinder. No, we do have a. We totally got rid of that. We have a um, 
uh, Vitamix that gets used daily for smoothies. But you can put the, uh, why couldn't we put the square? We uh, do have a dry blender that yeah. is currently in a kitchen box in storage. Yeah, let so, us know if that's something somebody uses, because maybe that'd be a way to solve possibly. the problem. Right now I'm wishing I had it, you know, to make flour and things now that we're having trouble finding things. <laughs> can you make toilet paper with the Vitamix? No. No. Still no salt. <laughs> All right. I think that's probably a, a highlight of what we've done. This is our, uh, our first attempt at all this stuff. We're hoping to do some more. Uh, if there's things that you'd like to see, things that you'd like us to uh, talk about, we can do. Um, most of our stuff, or all of our stuff, is gluten and dairy free. A lot of it's vegan as well. And so, trying to think through what we want to share and, and bring this to you. Uh, but hopefully, you enjoy it. Let us know if there's something else you'd like to, to see us talk about, or uh, argue about, or, or share stories about. <laughs> and and how happy. much information you would like about those things. <laughs> Documentary style, or that's it. Tell us about your childhood. No. Nope. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Bye. for joining us. Have fun. Enjoy a lot of coffee, and tell us what your favorites are. It was actually it was bedroom coffee. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna find after sharing that story that there's a lot of people that can relate to bedroom coffee. There's probably not the only people that do that. It's possible. Probably. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> or we'll edit it out. <laughs> you know, who knows? But the poor people here on uh, live yeah. have already heard. <laughs>